Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. So Alar Khan here and continuing the discussion from the previous video where today we basically start the new topic that is the four year series representation of signals. And as the Hazing suggests, four year series representation of periodic signals, right? So this four year series representation is for periodic signals only, okay? So this is a point that you should not miss. That this is for periodic signals only. Fine. So now the signal that we took in the last video was a complex exponential. So we write it as exponential of st where s was a complex number. In the Fourier series representation we usually take s to be purely imaginary. To be purely and I hope the spelling is right it's purely imaginary which means that my Sigma in this particular case would be equal to zero so I would write it as what I would only be using exponential of J Omega T exponential of J Omega T this would be my signal that I would be using fine and now what do you have if I have make this purely imaginary what benefit do I get from this what is the extra information or the usefulness from this is what so the usefulness is that this is like a sinusoid this is like a sinusoid this has a sinusoidal behavior and which means if it has a sinusoidal behavior so this is periodic and what I was interested in is a periodic signal to represent my signal as a Fourier series is that clear till now so now what do I have if I give it to the uh, you know if now this is my input that is exponential of j omega t so now if i give this to an lti system so we know that this is the eigen function of the system so we would get the eigen value that is h of uh, j omega multiplied with the same eigen function that is exponential of j omega t and you also uh, write a point that a, that a linear combination of periodic signals is also periodic okay a linear combination of periodic signals is also periodic and you may know this and if you don't know it so you can prove it for yourself very simply so this is a simple but a very important point that a linear combination of periodic signals is also periodic fine now now what do I have is we are basically you know interested in we are talking about the periodic signals basically or generally in this particular case so we are also taking the continuous time case so first of all let's us go back to the definition for periodic signal the definition of periodic signal is that x of t would be equal to x of t plus capital t plus minus capital t whatever you write so this is the definition for periodicity this is the definition for periodicity and this definition holds for all values of small t right and where this capital t could also be plus t minus t plus 2t minus 2t plus 3t minus 3t whereas the plus t that is the smallest positive non-value of uh, non-zero value of t smallest positive non-zero value of t is what that is the fundamental period fundamental period and this we would be representing basically with a t naught fine and then we have the fundamental frequency and that we would represent by omega naught where omega naught uh, or t naught is equal to uh, 2 pi by omega naught or omega naught is 2 pi by t naught so this is the relation fine yes so we want to represent our given signal as a linear combination of what? We want to represent our given signal as a linear combination of this exponential signal. Right? So this is what our goal is. Now talking of the talking of the complex exponential we have a term associated with it and that is the harmonically related that is the harmonically related exponentials 
harmonically related exponentials and you know what it is because we've already seen this but let this be a general rep uh, a repetition you know they are a set of signals that is represented like this phi k is equal to exponential of j k omega naught t so these are the set of signals having one period common with different fundamental periods but one period common so i would write it uh, like this that they are the set of signals a number of periodic signals or whatever you write uh, so that is you know having different fundamental periods having different fundamental periods but one period common and you know how it is and we would you know generally re revise it in this video that let's say uh, if we have uh, you know k is equal to zero for k is equal to what uh, k is equal to zero what do we have a uh, phi of zero would be one right so this is a constant signal for k is equal to one what do we have we have phi one would be equal to exponential of uh, j omega naught t right then for k is equal to 2 we have phi of 2 would be exponential of j 2 omega naught t similarly for k is equal to 3 you have phi of 3 would be exponential of j 3 omega naught t so what do i mean to say is that in this case let's say the frequency is 0 right in the first case omega naught is 0 fine or it is undefined yes it's zero the time period is infinite for a constant signal then for k is equal to one we have the frequency is equal to omega naught right and the fundamental period is t naught but have a look over here for k is equal to two the frequency is two omega naught which implies that the if the frequency is double time period would now be half similarly now this is three omega naught so which means that now this would be <coughs> now this would be one so you replace it over here by 3 omega naught so it would be by 3 or by 6 or whatever it is it would be by 6 right so you check this whatever it is I, I'm not writing it over here so you, you, you check this yourself so have a look the period the fundamental this is the fundamental period is t naught the fundamental period is t naught by 2 but we have another period the second period of this signal could be t right if this is t naught by 4 somewhere it would have a fundamental uh, somewhere it would have a period equal to t which means that all of them would have one period that is t in common right so the fun so the common period in this particular example that we are seeing the common period is equal to t the common frequency is equal to omega fine so this is it now what do you have if we take a linear combination if we take a linear combination of this particular thing take linear combination of this set of signal that is phi k so what would i have is i would have my x of t is equal to summation and let me check yes it's k running from negative infinity to positive infinity what do you have let's say multiply with some coefficient let's say weight a k times the set phi k and this basically is equal to what this is basically equal to uh, let me you know uh, write it over here with the black color you have a summation k running from negative infinity to positive infinity the weight is a k and have a look they said this phi k represent the set of these harmonically related exponential signals which is exponential of j k omega naught t so this is what i have done i have represented my given signal x of t in terms of what in terms of a linear combination of the basic signal that i have taken in this particular case is is what exponential so this is the Fourier series representation of a signal and this is what we call the complex Fourier series 
This is what we call the complex Fourier series. And why we call it complex? Because x of t is generally complex. x of t is equal to generally complex. Okay, it could be purely imaginary, it could be purely real, but generally it is complex. So this is the complex Fourier series representation of a signal. And now this, the overall, the linear combination, the linear combination would be periodic because I told you that a linear combination of periodic signals is also periodic. So all of these signals are periodic. The linear combination would also be periodic. And what would be the fundamental period? X of t is periodic with fundamental period that is the common to all with fundamental period t <coughs> so so this is it it would be the fundamental period with period t is the is for this thing right now uh, basically what do we have we generally deal with the complex fourier series but we could also have another question that if we want to simplify for ourselves if we want it in terms of sines and cosines so that is more easy to generalize that is more easy to handle maybe for, for from a general perspective you know we feel easy with sine and cosines so what if we do it like that so let me remove the board first okay so for that first we do what we first make an assumption first we do what we make an assumption or we make a background for that that if my signal is purely real if what happens that if my signal x of t is real signal so in that case what would you have the definition is that the signal would be equal to the conjugate of it right so x of t would be equal to the conjugate of x of t that is what we know and now you know if i write it like this that x of t is equal to summation k running from a negative infinity to positive a k exponential of j k omega naught t right you have this you have this like this yes we have it like this now i take the conjugate on both sides so what would i have i would have the x uh, conjugate of t this would equal like this summation so the conjugate of a k as well and then the conjugate of this would be like what this would be i say a negative sign right yes so a negative sign would come with k this is like this now by the definition if x of t is real so x of t would be equal to x conjugate of t so i would take what i would take the left hand side of this equation I would take the left hand side of this equation and I would equate it to the right hand side of this because the left of this is also equal to the right of this. So what do I have is that x of t would now be equal to summation k running from a negative infinity to positive infinity a k conjugate exponential of negative j k omega naught t. Is that clear till here? Now the next thing is that my k is running from a negative infinity to positive infinity this is what we know so if i replace my k by k my negative of k still it won't have any effect still it won't have any effect so now what do i do in the next step the next step implies that my x of t this word equal and the summation I'm writing again and again as well. So you have a, a negative k is conjugate, right? Isn't it like this? It should be yes. And now we would have an exponential of plus j k omega naught t. Is that clear till here? Now, now have a look. We have x of t. 
we have this one x of t we have this one x of t to prove that this x of t is equal to that x of t what do we have what is the necessary condition to satisfy to satisfy these two equations a k should be equal to the conjugate of a negative k or you could also do it the opposite way that the conjugate of a k should be equal to a of minus k and this is what i wanted to prove from here a k should be equal to the conjugate of a negative k or the conjugate of k k should be equal to a of negative k right and what are these a k's basically so these are known as the fourier coefficients these a k's are fourier coefficients or they are uh, spectrum coefficients or they are expansion coefficient so these are the three names for this a k so it has nothing to do you know i just wanted to give you a background of the topic that i'm moving into now so an alternate form of the fourier series an alternate form so an alternate alter net form so what could that alternate form be that my x of t i represented it like this i said that my x of t is equal to k running from negative infinity to positive infinity a k exponential of j k omega naught t now what do i do is i split it i take for k equal to zero i have a naught i take it outside plus i do what i do a summation k running from 1 to infinity and what would i have inside the brackets i would have an a k exponential of j k omega naught t and then i would have a plus a of negative k right isn't it like this it would be like this and i would have an a of negative k exponential of negative j k omega naught so which means that i have split this summation into something like this one for negative one for positive and for zero i have a constant value fine that for real signal for real signal this particular a of negative k this is equal to what a k is conjugate so let me replace it over here directly okay so you need to do it in the next step you do it like this and you do it over here that you replace it by an a k conjugate now what do you have have a look this is one thing this is the other thing so these two are the complex conjugates of each other and let me mention them with the red color that these two terms they are the conjugate of each other so what do you get when you add two conjugates together you get twice of the real and you know that very well so now what would be my x of t my x of t would come out to be my x of t would come out to be a naught uh, plus the summation k running from 1 to infinity two times the real component of and i will write one of them you could write you could write either so let's say i write a k exponential of j k omega naught t is that fine now now if we have this a k so we could represent it in two ways and let me write first with the green and the second with the red so whatever you know uh, a k would be generally complex a k is generally complex okay and you know generally complex equal to complex so 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 i would write it like this a k is generally complex so let me write it in the polar form so a k could be a capital a k times exponential of j theta something yes you have an a k times exponential of j theta k if i use this representation in this particular form so my x of t would become what so let me write it okay x of t would become a naught plus the summation that is k running from 1 to infinity plus 2 times the real of 
the real of what? Uh, so in place of ak, I would write ak and then exponential of j theta k. So what do we have? So you would take it common, you know, you would be adding these together. So let's say this is j theta k is like this and you have an exponential of j k omega naught t. Fine. So if you have a single exponential, you would have to add them together. And now what do you have if you add them together? So you take the j uh, j common right only j is common yes so you have an omega naught t well, an k omega naught t plus theta k so this i would take common and this i would multiply it with a j so this is something you would get right and now what can i have the real of this particular thing would come out to be this is a cause function right this is a cause function and this you know from your mathematics and now i would write my x of t this would be equal to a naught plus summation k running from one to infinity and let me check from here the real of this is two times a k two times a k the real of this particular thing if you expand it okay by the Euler theorem by the Euler theorem you expand it so you have cos function the real function will be the cos function omega naught t plus theta k omega naught t plus theta k so this is what I have if I use the polar form if I use the polar form representation I can also use I can also use the rectangular form if my ak is something like this bk plus jck right if I write a bk plus jck where b would be the real and c would be the imaginary part so what would I have I would have my x of t equal to what my x of t would be equal to a naught plus k running from 1 to infinity 2 times the real of what the real of so now in place of ak i would write this thing bk plus jck and this would be multiplied with this particular thing that is exponential of j k omega naught t and let me check isn't it like this oh uh, no so so yes it is like this but now for simplification for simplification we write it in terms of sine and cos so what would i have this would be multiplied with a cos of k omega naught t cos of k omega naught t minus j minus j right plus j plus j sine of k omega naught t plus j sine of k omega naught t and yes k omega naught t so now you have to multiply these two together <coughs> sorry so you know that now we need the the real part only so my x of t would come out to be what if this is a naught plus the summation would come out k running from 1 to infinity you have the 2 as well and now the real of this would be what so this multiply this would give me a real this multiply this would be imaginary then this multiply this would also be imaginary this multiply this would be real again so the first is bk multiplied cos of k omega naught t and then you would have for this j square you would have a minus 1 you would have a ck times sine of k omega naught t and 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 let me check so yes this is fine this is fine and these would be inside the brackets to you know get you the, to the summation so now this that I have written with the black color is now the alternate form of the Fourier series that I told you. Now I have the sine and the cosine involved. So whenever sinusoids get involved, one, one you know feels easy to solve them. So 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 this is it. Now I told you to name that as complex Fourier series. The name for these two is trigonometric Fourier series. Trigno metric Fourier series. The name for this one and for this one. These are one in the same thing, you know. So that was a complex Fourier series. This is a trigonometric Fourier series. Fine. So uh, let me, uh, you know, talk about the Fourier coefficients in this video as well. 
So for that I would have to remove the board first and I would remove all of it. I would only need this equation because we generally use this. So let me remove. I hope this is clear till here. Fine. Okay. So now I, we talked about AK that was the weight or we talked about AK that was you know the coefficient to the signal. So let's get into some detail of it. How to find it, how to do what, how to calculate it or something like that. So the thing is that we mostly use the, the, the complex Fourier series and the complex Fourier series is represented like this. A k exponential of j k omega naught t and this particular equation this is known as the synthesis equation this is known as the synthesis equation fine now now we need to know some information about a k so what do i do is my a k is unknown to me now first of all if I am uh, you know uh, my speed is slow in this video so I'm very sorry because I'm not feeling well I have uh, you know my throat I'm not feeling that good so my speed is slow and you're getting disturbed so I'm sorry first of all now so anyways ak so what do I do is I multiply both sides of this equation by an exponential of negative j right so x of t is multiplied with an exponential of negative jk omega naught t yes negative j n negative j n omega naught t so i introduce another variable so negative j n omega naught t and i also i also you know multiply it to the next side of it that is k running from negative to positive a k exponential of j k omega naught t is the first and multiply it with an exponential of negative j n omega naught t fine okay now the next step is the second step is to integrate this okay and now let me tell you that i already had recorded the next portion but while editing the video i saw that it was not present so maybe i had deleted it somewhere so i'm recording this again so maybe you see a change of light or whatever okay so i have tried to put the same clothes on by the way <laughs> okay so the next step is that you integrate it over one period so let's say i integrate it from zero to capital t you can integrate it from a negative t by 2 to positive t by 2 you can integrate it from a t to 2t whatever you want let me integrate it till the fundamental period over any period you could integrate it fine now have a look <clears throat> the summation is independent of the integration right a k is independent of the integration it only depends on the summation so i take it out i take it out like this that my k is running from a negative infinity to positive infinity a k and now i have the integration part that is from zero to t and what do i have it's an exponential so have a look i could take j omega naught t common and i would have a k minus n in the brackets k minus n in the brackets and a j omega naught t j omega naught t is common isn't it like this because we would have to add them together if we are to have it let's say I do it like this let's say i combine them right so this is if the this is if the next step so that is the preceding step fine so now what do i have is have a look the the value of the integration if i see first so first i have a look at the value of the integration the integrant so this is from zero to t exponential of k minus n times j omega naught t what would be the value so it could have two different values depending on the value of k and n right so the first would be for k equal to n right and the other could be for k not equal to n so now if i ask you the question what would be the values so for k equal to n it would be simple enough i know that as well so k would be equal to n this would be zero multiply zero right exponential to the power zero would be one integrate of one would be t so we have a capital t over here when k is not equal to n so let me put it up to you guys yes what would be the integration answer if k is not equal to n yes think over it pause the video and think over it so anyways if you know it from before you can let me know in the comment section or let me tell you that this is what we said in the beginning of the video that this is a signal whose behavior is that as a sinusoid 
we mean it has a sinusoidal behavior and we know that the sinusoidal signal is periodic in nature and again we know that the integration of a periodic sinusoid over one period is equal to zero so the answer to this is zero over here so now coming back to my topic the left hand side was zero to t you have x of t exponential of negative j n omega naught t and the right hand side is now this step so you have your summation a k would go on for k equal to n we only are interested over here now because for k not equal to n it would be zero everything would be zero we don't need it right because if the integrand is zero multiplied with any value of a k would be zero so we only talk about k equal to n so i would have an a n over here an and in the integration this integration would uh, turn out to be t this integration will turn out to be t so which means that i've got my value of an so my value of an this would be equal to one upon t the integration over one period x of t exponential of negative j n omega naught t and this is my final answer but now have a look you can have a question in your mind <coughs> that i was interested in finding out a k over here i've got a n what is this case so the answer to this question is that what was k it was an independent variable over here what is n it is again an independent variable so uh, n, n was the variable that i introduced myself so the independent variable does not matter over here i could just simply write it as what i could simply write it as k and i could simply replace this why k as well because this is an independent variable and it doesn't matter over here now if we had both of them then we could not do it like this but we don't have so we took it for our simplicity we're removing it for our simplicity so that's it and this equation to find out the Fourier coefficient this is known as the analysis equation this is known as the analysis equation so these are the two equations that we would be using from now on most uh, you know in mo uh, mostly so the first is to express any general signal in terms of the exponential that is the synthesis equation to find the Fourier coefficient this would be the analysis equation so these are the two and you would find the use of this ak why uh, why are we interested in the Fourier coefficients we would we, uh, we would uh, see this line spectrum from this the frequency components so that's it okay that's about this video i don't have anything else see you in the next video with some examples till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you and do remember me in your prayers goodbye